tis the season and uh, I've got some target panic to work on before I really get out there and uh, feel comfortable and happy with what I'm doing. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you how I'm working on dealing with my target panic with a compound and uh, using a new release this year. Well, it's an old release that I've had, but new this year that I'm actually going to seriously try to use and that's a thumb button. I'm not gonna use it like that. And I'm gonna show you how I'm working on making my target panic go away with a compound this year. And uh, it's gonna be part of my journey on getting more serious. Today's video is a cross training video uh, because you know I've been shooting and training rare, fairly regularly and I need a day to do something a little bit different and I'm putting training wheels on today and I'm gonna get after it. So like I've said in previous videos, I've got some serious target panic with the compound. Not afraid to admit it. Um, developed when I was very young. I shot compound growing up actually. I started shooting on a compound when I was six years old and by the time I was 12, I had debilitating target panic to the point of where it just wasn't fun anymore. I wanted to quit. And that's why I switched to uh, recurve style archery because of the clicker. It just kind of eliminated that target panic issue. So, um, you know, my progress uh, through the years was I was originally on a you know an index finger puncher basically wrist strap and tried many different styles of that uh, with no success and eventually got to a back tension that helped for a while but then I realized you know the further my hand was rotating back the closer it was to firing so my bow arm would just be and it was terrible couldn't aim in the middle and just didn't work. You know, you can't even use the six ring down low as your new 10 ring because that's your new 10 ring and you start aiming in the four ring and down, down, down and, you know, never fun. So, uh, never really had time to work through that, um, but I've decided that I've got some time and I wanna work through it as best as I can. And, you know, I've learned a few things and uh, I'd like to put them to good use here and see if I can make any progress. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna put this down to start and I'm gonna pick up your most basic tool you could possibly ever use, some D-loop material. Uh, I used to have it full length so I could, you know, well not full length because I'd be in a spool, but long enough that I set it for my correct draw length. Uh, but I had to cut it because I needed some D-loop for tying some D-loops. I do have a uh, Marin trainer somewhere in the depths of uh, moving boxes. I can't find it. Um, a Marin trainer is basically a stretch band with a built-in draw stop that you can adjust. So it's really handy for this kind of thing. And what I'm going to do for a little while, and I've already been practicing this, so I'm not going to bore you with it and actually show you how much I'm doing it, but I'm going to show you some basics as to what I'm trying to work on. Because what I'm trying to do is to not do that, not punch, you know, obviously. And I'm trying to set this release off a thumb trigger correctly. And the way that I'm going to do it is I'm going to basically touch my index and thumb finger like this and then settle into the anchor after, you know, after I come into anchor, set and touch here because then that touches the barrel into the pad of my thumb back there and then do nothing more than pull. And as I'm pulling, 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 it adds pressure against the release and eventually it'll fire at a surprise. Uh, that is my entire plan for working on getting through this target panic. I've played, played with a hinge some and I'm pretty good with that. I, I like it with a click where I come into anchor and it clicks and then you know I just kind of relax into the shot, relax my hand a bit and it fires. But this year I wanted to play with a thumb button and just get in there, hook right here, pull, 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 and it'll fire and it'll be a surprise. So much as it's a surprise with this and I blink because I'm still not sure when it's going to fire. So there's going to be some things that I'm going to be playing with and uh, hopefully not struggling too much with, and just kind of getting used to doing this and making the release fire as a surprise and not punching it one bit. You'll see here, I'm at blank bail. I have uh, no target face up yet, and I'm gonna shoot a few shots, shoot a few arrows, and then I'm gonna put a target face on, a huge one, the big 122 centimeter face, mostly just because that's why uh, I, what I've got on the target right now, and step back to 20 and uh, you know do some shooting and you'll be able to see my form with a compound 
And, you know, many people have asked, do you do KSL shot cycle? Do you use the best method or the NTS system with a compound? I don't know. You tell me. I just pull back a bow and uh, do my best not to punch. And uh, feel free to critique me. All you compound keyboard warriors out there, welcome. Uh, please do rip me a new one because I just shoot a bow and have a fun time and uh, do my best that I can. You know, I've been around the block in recurve. I've definitely not earned my stripes in compound. I'd like to one day. Uh, you know, I enjoy shooting all types of archery. It's a lot of fun to me. So I've got three arrows and a pocket quiver. Highly, highly technical stuff here. And uh, I'm just gonna, gonna shoot some arrows. You let me know what you think. Yeah, my peep's not tight in. I'm busy. I didn't punch that one. First one's a success. Now this bow is a uh, Hoyt Spider 34 from a year, few years back. Um, it's a 70 pound limbs. I think I've got it set somewhere in 65 to 68 pound range, give or take. I'm not entirely sure, but you know, in case you're wondering, I'm shooting over 65 pounds. Two for two, all right. <laughs> Blank bail's not the problem, even though, you know, anxiety still, still goes up. Target panic is not very fun, let me tell you. But what is fun, I like shooting a compound. So far, so good. I'm gonna change the camera angle for you guys as usual, give you an idea of the, the type of form I'm working with. Just because I haven't shot a compound on this channel before, not within most recent times. So, you know, that way you can check it out. And uh, if you really want to, tell me what you think. Still a surprise every time it goes off, so that's a good thing. Just hook in deep and pull, pull, pull till it fires. Now the real um, difficulty for me in the beginning is trying to figure out how much to like build that pressure into the hand on, on the finger with the thumb because then it then has pressure on the palm against the barrel and how much pressure you preload depends on how quickly it fires when you pull. You'll see that that last one, the timing went a little bit longer um, and that's because I definitely was a little softer in the hand. It wasn't as, as firm against the barrel to begin with so it takes a little longer to get it to fire. And like I said, so far so good. Three, six for six. So I do all the basic same things that I do with my recurve. I equalize both sides. I balance power front and back equally. I drive that front bow arm forward equal to the amount that I'm pulling. And I'm pushing the pressure of the bow exactly where I want the arrow to go. Um, I don't change that at all. I find that to be a very helpful and uh, you know very uh, important to consistency for sure on all types of archery. wasn't going off and uh, I could really feel myself wanting to hit the trigger so I decided just to kind of 
let it down and do it the right way. Do not want to ingrain bad habits and I do not want to give myself an opportunity to punch. I'm committing to doing it the right way and that is the only way. Nine for nine. Better. I uh, moved the barrel out even further this way so it's got a lot more initial pressure into my thumb and then I don't run out of not necessarily time but like the ability to have the focus on okay pull 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 against the wall and not squeeze the trigger I have to do that if I do anything at all that's related to squeeze the trigger it's gonna go south in a hurry Ugh. What was that? 12 for 12 now. Um, I'm still happy with it. Again, I'm just trying to figure out consistency and placing stuff in my hand. You know, the timing could be inconsistent and that's what I don't really want too much of. I don't want that, that uh, whatever it is, target panic, to kick in and win the battle you know i'm i'm trying to give myself an edge in every little bit here uh, before putting up a target face you know because once you do that then it can you know challenge some things so i'm going to do a few more ends before even thinking about putting a target face on and can you continue to see how it goes i'm starting to aim at arrow holes on the target now and like little spots of target guts that are stuck in the bale and holes starting to give me an idea of what it's going to be like shooting in front of a target and as long as i set everything in my hand consistently and do that uh, same thing over and over again and really set up consistently um, it's easy it's really simple and i can manage it very easily as long as i do this consistently Fifteen so far. Darn fly. Uh, so far so good up to 18 now all right i'm here at uh 18 meters 20 yards now got a camera downrange, so you'll see the impact point unfortunately i uh, recorded this already and something happened to the file on the camera i broke an arrow while doing this um from hitting it in the target luckily not from shooting it 
and I figured out a few things. So I'm gonna explain to you what I figured out while I shot a couple of ends and it didn't record on film for some reason. Not sure why, but it happens. Uh, essentially, what I found was it wasn't necessarily the inconsistency of the preload that I was putting against the barrel. What I found was I was pulling a lot with my index finger and not a lot with the rest of the hand. And instead I found that if I should shoot it like a hinge where you're kind of pulling with the whole hand and not just with the index finger, if I pulled with the index finger more, you can see how the barrel rotates away from the palm. But if I pull more like a hinge, the barrel rotate, rotates in. So I found that that helps a whole lot uh, with getting the release to fire more consistently and more comfortably. And I also found out that obviously I need a mental routine and need to add it into this like I've already discussed in a previous video to this about um, you know how important a shot routine is mentally to the shot. So here we go again, uh, cold, not after shooting blank bail. I went inside and I started editing the video and realized that the footage got compromised somehow. So I'm here and I'm gonna shoot a couple of arrows here for you at 18 meters or 20 yards at a target face while trying to work on uh, target panic. This is something I recommend starting with is progressing slow and using a target that is impossible to miss. You know, it's so big, it's 122 centimeter face. So I'm gonna do my best just to hit the yellow and not necessarily shoot the center of the yellow. I don't wanna be too precise uh, because I think I can get too careful and then that's where some of the target panic issues come in. Oh. Still surprised, which is a good thing. Not too shabby. I'm gonna go shoot a couple more ends like this and I'm gonna leave the camera there so you'll see the impact points as well. And hopefully I keep making it work the way I'm supposed to and not hitting the button. I definitely like pulling it and shooting it like it's a hinge. It feels a lot more comfortable that way and it, sh it fires way more consistently. So far, so good. It still shoots, still feels really, really good. It feels good to shoot a compound this way, the right way, while being able to aim at the middle and be comfortable. Um, definitely making that little discovery at the very end to pull like it's a hinge and not to just pull, especially not just with the index finger, makes a heap of difference. And it feels very comfortable. I can keep the timing consistent that way. And you know, there's more to focus on than just one index finger or one part. It's like, you know, the whole hand as a whole, everything coming together at the same time, dividing and really building power equally. Uh, it's just, it's a joy to shoot compound this way. And, you know, I think I can get pretty proficient with it pretty quickly as long as I really make sure I commit to not, um, not punching. You know, I commit to pulling through the shot. I commit to really delivering the arrow the way it should be. And I think overall, I'll be a lot happier about it and I'll continue to do it more and more. And overall, I'll just be happier about it. So anyway, you guys out there, Compound, what do you think of the form? It's the first time you're really seeing it on camera here. Uh, first time you're seeing it really in general. And uh, you know, I feel pretty good after reviewing the video and actually editing most of it. Um, Maybe the draw length's a little long. There's definitely a little bit of excess face pressure on the string. You know, it's back a little bit far. I know that can affect a lot. Um, I'm not going for world championships at this point. Probably never will, to be honest, with compound. But, um, you know, I'm having a good time having fun. Uh, but if you see something glaringly wrong or potentially not too bad, let me know. Do comment below because I'm curious. I want to know uh, what you think. And 
I have no idea if it looks mostly all right. It looks fine to me. Um, it feels good to me. And I mean, it's 20 yards on 122 centimeter face, so it's pretty hard to miss at this point. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Anyway, if you'd like to see more compound uh, content or anything else in general, let me know. I'm always open to suggestions and uh, I like to put out relevant content to people who actually are interested in watching it. So, thanks.